Hi, uh, this is um, episode 27. Tomorrow is April Fool's Day, so uh, buckle up, uh, don't read anything and don't believe anything. It's going to be really fun. <laughs> um, no, I don't participate in that particularly. Um, but okay, episode 27. Um, and we're starting to get uh, the hang of this. 27. That's quite a lot of episodes by now. I'm I'm um, I'm enjoying that uh, I still have a few viewers that um, keep on watching this and follow me and comment and everything and bring me feedback. So keep up with that. So this week another kind of uh, packed week with things, just small things, but a lot of them. So um, uh, I wanted to mention that first. I wanted to start out with this OCSP stapling thing. You know, OCSP stapling, it is a way for a server, a, a, a TLS server, to provide extra info about a certificate from the CA in the response. So when you negotiate the TLS handshake, you can get extra info to be more sure of the certificate it provides. So anyway, we support OCSP stapling in curl for a bunch of backends since a while, um, short way. But anyway, so uh, to make it work with OpenSSL, we had to do this funky workaround and there was a bug filed on OpenSSL link somewhere here. It's somewhat obscure. But anyway, so we had, to, that was a bug, but we figured out a workaround so we could work with OpenSSL anyway to do a OCSP stapling and everything was good, fine and dandy. And, and then we ran into this, I mentioned, I think last week as well that they um, they uh, they are moving away from a lot of structs uh, in in the in the project so so they move they hide the, in the contents of the structs in OpenSSL so anyway they hid another struct that we needed for this workaround to do OCSP stapling. So we had to change the functions instead that they provide, but they don't provide access to that particular field in struct to do the workaround. But they also fixed that little bug, not the way um, Alessandro had su uh, suggested, but in another way, it doesn't matter because we, we now can work with OpenSSL without the workaround. But here's the, here's the nice little catch. Only then with the absolutely latest OpenSSL, which by the time I checked uh, didn't exist in a, in a release version and they released 1.0.2a without the fix. So we know that up until that point we couldn't do it. Um, we needed the workaround and then we don't need the workaround anymore. And then we can switch to the new... Um, so, so with all those newer OpenSSLs we can use the new API as well since we don't need the access to the structs. But enter um, the uh, OpenSSL forks then, as in Libre SSL, they have the same bug, but they haven't uh, fixed the bug, and they still have that, um, they, they still provide the structs the way that OpenSSL did, or still does, as, as OpenSSL will remove it at some point, and they have done so in Git. Uh, so, the, the if def uh, maze to make sure that this works with your particular OpenSSL version is uh, getting hairy. And I think this is just the beginning, especially with all these um, OpenSSL forks. Uh, it's turning into a real mess in the code. But, but of course, the good part is that it's, it is actually still working. I think um, we can still build a curl with all those three OpenSSL forks, even if it I'm glad that they're doing this work gradually, so I don't have to do everything at once, because I would probably start to cry if I would have to do everything this again. I mean, if they would do all these tiny little things in a big blow instead of small, small steps one at a time. And anyway, then, as a, another little thing then that um, in OpenSSL's continued move to, to hide contents of structs, they also um, they also uh, moved out a couple of functions or API. They kind of 
deprecated functions in, the, in their API. And why LibSSH2 can no longer build with the latest OpenSSL as a backend. And <clears throat> I filed a bug that, on that in, in our project, but I haven't fixed it. And I, I, yeah. and I figure that is only this is only the beginning of this. It's going to continue, so there will be more of these kind of nuisances. Other curl TLS happenings is that um, a lot of transitions these days. The formerly known Polar SSL is now called Embed TLS with MB in the beginning, so no E, just Embed TLS. And um, now, since um, they did this rebranding in their latest release, I think it's called 1.3.10. So Starting from that release, curl will call it embed TLS in, in the outputs and everywhere if, in, if you use it. And we'll try to update some documentations here and there to also mention that since it gets confusing to users to which libs we support and, and which we don't support and whatever everything is. And then on top of that, the lib library formerly known as CYASL, as in C-Y-A SSL, uh, is now called Wolf SSL. So they too did this, pretty much the same kind of rebranding. So this it's basically the same thing with a new name. And now uh, from a particular version, I believe too, they, they are called Wolf SSL. And so we're making sure that we are reporting the library then as Wolf SSL, as that's what it's called now. Yeah, a lot of a lot of TLS things these days. Uh, that's about it about TLS, I think. In other TLS things, uh, but more more in the general uh, scope, then uh, Firefox 37 is released today. I think it'll it'll come out, and now uh, Firefox will support what we called opportunistic security by default for HTTP. And uh, as the first, it's, I think it's the only browser. It is, it is certainly the first browser and it's, I, I think it's the only browser. Uh, I don't think anyone else have uh, has stated that they will support it. It's, anyway, it allows a server to respond with a server, uh, with, a, with a header that says, you may do the. You may get the exact same contents um, from this um, place instead on this host, this port number with this protocol. So you can actually make an HTTP server that says you can also fetch our content with TLS on over here, which basically that means that you're getting HTTP using TLS from from somewhere, usually than the same site. But I mean, um, that's opportunistic because. It starts out at, uh, as clear text as a clear text protocol, and it can switch to a TLS protocol, and that's unauthenticated. Then, so you can't trust it. It's not secure. It's not sure. You you is easy easy to man in the middle of this and and fake it and everything. But it at least it, it is opportunistic. It tries to use encryption and uh, um, a TLS connection unauthenticated to whatever the server says you should connect to, to get that data. So this is all in an attempt to, to make sure that we do more things encrypted and make it harder for mass surveillance and so on to protect users uh, to, a, to a larger extent. I think it's going to be really interesting to see how that option of this will be and on what users think and how it will turn out in reality. nghtp2.org, the fine site from the NGHP2 um, project. They have a, a great site for all sorts of uh, early experimental um, TLS features and so on, since HP2 and ALPN and whatever. And they have also uh, enabled this opportunistic uh, encryption. Uh, it's called ALT SVC, the header that says alternate services. So you can refer to an alternate service location. That, that is uh, fun. So it, it'll be enabled in Firefox that ships today. In, uh, in other uh, network news, the IETF started up another 
or a new, I should say, non-work group related mailing list called Captive Portals about uh, discussing how to detect Captive Portals and how Captive Portals should announce their uh, existence and, and timeouts and, and how to authentic authenticate with it and so on. Captive Portals is, to, to be to be blunt, and you know, when you log in or you insert your or you access the Wi-Fi at the hotel or an airport or uh, just uh, whatever um, community area you are in the coffee shop and it says well you have to log in with a name and a user or perhaps pay for for your access or whatever and at some point later on in time it'll bring you back to that login page and you'll be very annoyed and so on that's the captive portal it holds you captive in that portal until you um, fill in the form or pay or see the video or whatever so there's a discussion now how to do that in a smoother way to make both ends. I mean, both the ones who runs the captive portal and the browsers and, and, and make sure that everyone tries to, I mean, get along better to make it a better experience to users because captive portals today are basically uh, hacks and uh, various kinds of uh, weird tricks on, on, on fooling you, uh, both operating systems and browsers to to do the way to do what they think you should do it doesn't really work many times especially not for tls and hps sites so i think it's a good idea to to see where we can go with this so i'm subscribed you should subscribe too if you're interested in this kind of problems i did a blog post just a few hours ago about uh, the current state of hp2 uh, adoption and the rate and a bunch of guesses what I think the rate will be at the end of 2015 I also asked a bunch of friends and, and I asked on Twitter and, and, and Google Plus and everywhere to, for, for people to just submit their guesses in my little survey so I, I'm also presenting that poll, those poll results and what people actually think or guess the, the, the rate of HTTP2 will be by the end of 2015. I won't spoil it, but um, yeah, fun. I was quoted in, in this week's uh, Linux uh, weekly news, the LWN.net, one of those really good sites on the net that you really should uh, pay for and subscribe to and, and read religiously every week. Um, last week, as I mentioned in, the, in, the previous, uh, in my previous episode, we did a feature, re feature freeze for, for next curl release. So we're in a freeze now, as you can see. Ooh. No, but that, that only means that we're holding back on new features and we're saying we're not allowing new features until after the next release. And next release is scheduled to be on April 22nd. And we do them. Uh, I've said it numerous times before we do them every eight weeks so we're now having this four week bug fixes only period to make a f really uh, make everyone focus on fixing bugs only and not just cramming new features so even if it doesn't really work it mostly, mostly means that everyone with features they have to wait until after the release and everyone who works on bugs can just focus more on bugs and, and less on, on features so we are in that uh, phase now and just before the feature freeze I managed to get in uh, a new feature called path as is which is the the one the the feature I mentioned last week which then is the dot dot slash removal from the path in, in the <clears throat> uh, in the URL path so you can tell curl not to remove them that that is about that this week mm. i've been all over various bug reports this week in firefox and i think i'm going to be like that the coming week too working online offline things uh, the network detection they're related and i have some http 2 research uh, performance uh, stuff to just get my head around to make sure that uh, I thought I noticed some kind of weird performance um, discrepancy I mean that we shouldn't really have in Firefox 
but when trying to really measure and see things, I think I've just, I just see this because I use a, a debug version. So and 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 if I start to log a lot of things, things go slower anyway. So I try this uh, Akamai HP two demo. It uses nineteen by nineteen images, and and blurm them out in HP two, and that you're supposed to see a big difference uh, compared to the HP one point one version, and everyone I talk to. Um, they see a big diff. I don't on my Firefox uh, nightly, which has logging and everything enabled. But then I'm also three milliseconds away from the server, and all those images are very, very small. They're like 600 bytes each. Um, not, not exactly, but um, so I, I think I'm just too close to this with two small images, so I don't get much parallelism into this. So that might be the explanation. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try a little bit more. I have some other um, things to try out too. I'm also comparing with it since that's the like my demo page. There's also this golang.org demo page, which is roughly the same sort of thing. They have fewer images. They have 100, 180 images in a, in a square, um, and they also do this. Um, send everyone every one of those images to the to the client as fast as possible. They have slightly larger images, I think, which makes it... Uh, yeah, right, and I have a slightly longer round trip to that server. 12 milliseconds, which also is insanely uh, close. But So, uh, I'm, I'm working on that. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep myself busy. I have gonna have a, a Easter holiday next week, so I'm gonna be away skiing in the uh, up, up north in Sweden. I shouldn't say far up north because then my Swedish friends will tell me that it's, it's not really that far up north because Sweden is a very tall country. Um, so anyway, I'm going to be away next week. So you're going to have to keep up without me next week. I don't know how you're going to handle it, but um, you could always just post some comments on my uh, on my video here and I'll, I'll make sure that you can stay calm and uh, breathe calmly and slow and... And then I'll be back the week after that, possibly then with extra much material. And this is the longest episode I've ever done. I'll stop now. See you in two weeks. Bye.